everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Karina and welcome back to my channel. Today, as you guys can see, we are unboxing the base BoxyCharm box for February. I know it is now March, but of course this arrived when I was on a Caribbean vacation. Um, so I haven't had a chance to film yet. So this is the first chance I've had to film. I know it's coming late, apologies. But let's dive into the BoxyCharm for February 2023. This is the base box. And, um, and I've got thoughts. I've got thoughts. And they're not great thoughts for this particular month. So let's just dive right into it. Now, obviously with subscription boxes, not every box is going to be as successful for every single individual. Um, usually, of course, there's still a lot of good products in the box. But this particular month, honestly, this is kind of a dud for me. And I think part of the reason is it just started on the wrong note. So the theme of this one, because it's February, of course, is to treat your heart out. And um, do I see that with this box? Not really. And of course, because this is when they were starting to tease the big merger between BoxyCharm and Ipsy, we have no information on the card about the item, about product pricing. I have gone ahead and looked that up for you guys so I can give you the prices. All prices will be in USD for this video. Um, but yeah. I like to keep the cards so I can refer back to them over time, and uh, this month I'm not going to have anything to refer back to. So, fun. So let's talk about how this particular box started off on not the best foot, and that had to do with the choice items. Uh, so choice items you'll be seeing, for me, mascara is meh. All right, I get a lot of mascara, so even though Benefit is like a decent brand, it's a well-known brand, I've heard some good thing about the mascara. When it came to the foundation choice of the Rare Beauty, like, instantly sold. Um, I kind of grew up on Selena Gomez with Wizards of Waverly Place. I enjoy her music. I like the philosophy of Rare Beauty and her company that she's built. So I'm very excited to try any items from her. So when I saw that as a choice, done. Sold. And when I make my choices, I am very quick to get in. So to be generous, let's say within an hour of choice going live, I'm in there, I've made my choice. Most of the time it's like 15 minutes within an opening. So I make my choices very quickly. But, and this is about, I think, the fourth time this has happened since I first subscribed to BoxyCharm, is that they were unable to fill my choice because of... You know, popular demand, whatever. And I do appreciate that they gave, you know, a little bit of a store credit for their shop so I could replace that item. I'm still getting, of course, an item within my box, but I was looking forward to trying the foundation. And it, with the other option being the mascara, it's like, ugh, fine, whatever. So, of course, although I picked the foundation, we got the mascara here. Um, so this is the Benefit, their real power lifting and lengthening mascara. Again, Benefit is a nice brand. I mean, if that's the before and after, I'm willing to try that. That looks good. When we open up the box, right, we got the little magnet up on the top here. But the problem too with mascara is because I get so many of them in BoxyCharm, it's going to be a long time until you see this product again because I literally have years worth of mascara to go through before I could even consider opening this one. So that's the other thing, right? With mascara, because I've gone so many from BoxyCharm, you guys saw me open one last month as well. It's going to be a long time. So will I get use out of this? Eventually. I'll try it. I'll see if I like it. It does have a retail value of $28, which is not something I would normally pay for a mascara. I'm much more of like a drugstore person if I'm going to buy it myself. So at least I get to try something I wouldn't normally buy, which is a nice perk of these subscription boxes. But to start on this note, it was a bit kind of on the sad side. So this was my first item, my choice 
item. So then let's move into the next thing that came in my box. And that, of course, is this Evio skin. You guys can let me know how to pronounce that one. This is their Hemp and Peppermint Lip Serum. Um, it seems to be in the shade Speak Up. Um, you can kind of see if I squeeze it a little bit there. Or you can see a little bit of color. This is when it would be nice to have the card to tell me info about it because as a lip serum, just a stand on its own, do I use it with other products? I think because I'm going to have to do the research myself. This retails for $16, so it is on the cheaper side. And spoiler, this whole box is kind of on the cheaper side. So, yeah. I mean, this is natural. It's vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free, paraben-free, toxic-free. So lots of good claims. Is it a very exciting product? Not particularly. But still willing to give it a try. Next item in the box... <laughs> This is a brand I have not heard of before, as far as I can recall. This is the Michelle? Michelle? Something along those lines. This is a liquid eyeshadow, and it is also in the shade Michelle. So, must be what the brand's named after. And the liquid eyeshadow looks like this. So again, kind of looks similar to what we've received before. And again, I try not to have too many of these kind of liquid eyeshadows open at a time. Because again, once they're open, you kind of have to use them up pretty quick. And it takes a while to use them up. So the color looks nice. I'm excited to play with it. It looks like it should have some good shimmer. Obviously, I can't do much of a review for you guys until I actually pull it out to use it. But at this point, it's like, well, I have so many liquid eyeshadows that I also kind of have on like back order waiting to get rolled in as I use other ones up. This is a similar color to what we've received before. It's a nice color, but it's not what I would pick for myself. And it does have a value of $21, which that's pretty high, at least for a liquid eyeshadow. The next item I'm honestly kind of excited about, um, I got a nail polish. So I've taken it out of the box already, um, but this is the Orosa. This is their Coastal Craze line, their Pure Cover Nail Paint. Uh, the shade I got was in Bahama Blue, which is appropriate. I just literally got back from the Bahamas. That's one of the stops on our cruise line. So a very pretty blue, very summery. So I am kind of excited about this. This is the first nail polish I have received. The downside with that, though, is that this has a retail value of $12, which, again, you know, that's kind of on the higher side for a nail polish, especially with converting to Canadian. But overall, this is probably one of the cheapest items I've ever received in BoxyCharm. And especially when we stack it up with some of these other items, it is not contributing a whole lot of monetary value. I do enjoy nail polishes. Those of you who have seen my Project Polish, but you know I'll get good use out of this eventually. But for now, like, I'm happy to have gotten it. I'm excited to try it. I'm interested about the color. But again, when we're looking at the box of a whole, $12 isn't adding a whole ton of value to it. Which then brings us to the last item in the box, and it is the most expensive one in the box as well. This is the Iconic London. This is their Dewy Glow Highlight, which at first sound is pretty nice. We do have this very large item here, so good size. But, so this is the item in here. It is a cream highlighter. And I'm not a cream person. I will play with cream blushes. I find those are pretty easy to work with. I've had a hard time with cream bronzers. I'm not that big of a fan. And I'm also not that big of a fan either of cream or liquid highlights. I find them difficult to work with. I find it hard to apply properly. And when we're looking at these colors, right, obviously this brown is too dark for me. And I'm concerned at this point that both of these other shades, so three out of three, are also going to be too dark for me. They may not be, but 
I don't really want to, you know, be sticking my fingers into this product when I'm one, I'm not excited about it. Two, I'm not confident it's going to work for me. And three, it's just not part of my routine right now to use these kind of products. I prefer a powder highlight. And so I'd rather probably give this to someone else, right? See if someone else can get good use out of it. And that's kind of a shame because this item was the big ticket item. This is worth $38, which where big ticket items are concerned, not really a big ticket item, but for this box it was. But just for my makeup preferences, I just don't think I'm gonna get use out of it. And that's just super unfortunate. So just to bring you guys down a little bit lower, this is my box. Now, some people might really enjoy this. This is basically all makeup, right? Depending how we count this lip serum, like it does seem to be tinted, so that should provide color. So for those of you who are really excited about all makeup boxes, it's fantastic, right? We've got a good variety here. We've got lips, we've got two products for the eyes, we've got a nail polish, which again, that's kind of exciting. And of course we have the cream highlighters. You get kind of three in the one there. And that brings us to a total value of $115, which again, keeping in mind, yes, the value is there because you know we're paying, what is it, like the $27.99 plus conversion for a Canadian. So yes, let's say it's 30 bucks plus the conversion, right, to 115 plus conversion, right? So that value is there. But honestly, none of these items I would pay full price for. I mean, I don't like to pay full price for things anyway. I tend to prefer drugstore sales, using Sephora VIB, things like that. But even if they were, right, besides the nail polish, which again, probably the most exciting thing in this box, it's just, And again, especially because my choice item couldn't be fulfilled. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, right, these are subscription boxes. You don't necessarily get to choose everything that came in the box, especially in my case where they weren't able to fulfill my choice item. Yes, it was a dud for me personally, but that's not every month, right? So each month is a little bit different. And there's a lot of boxes that I really do enjoy. I get a lot of excitement from, but maybe I've got hidden gems here. And when I get the chance to play with these items, when they get into those rotations, right, maybe I'll start to really enjoy some of these items and be glad that I received them, right? You get to try things in these boxes, which is a big reason why I enjoy them. But at this point, this box, like I said, this is probably gonna be bottom for me, right? This is my least favorite I've gone in quite a while, which again, is still something, right? They've done fairly well overall. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens next month when we have our last kind of traditional BoxyCharm box before in April it merges and changes into its whole new system. So what did you guys get in your BoxyCharm this month, or technically at this point last month? What did you guys receive? What do you guys think of the items that I had received in my particular variation? Do I actually have some hidden gems in here that I'm just not very aware of? And of course, the premium box is going to be coming for you guys very soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And then of course, we'll see what happens with BoxyCharm when these boxes arrive for me in March. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in my next video very soon.